Now a few words on gas grain chemistry. We know that gas grain chemistry is important. First of all, we already discussed that molecular hydrogen in interstellar clouds cannot efficiently form in the gas phase. We know that some other species, for example NH or NH3, that we observe can also only form efficiently on ice mantles or on grain surfaces. For example, also water, carbon dioxide and so on. So this is going to take place and the typical understanding is that we might have a diffusive process called langmeier hinschelwood I already discussed this during the H2 formation, where we have an accretion of a species on a binding site on the grain surface and from here it can either go back to the gas phase or move on and to the next binding site either by hopping or by tunneling. So these binding sites are basically provided by these lattice of the solid body, the grain solid body um, lattice and can then collide with another particle already sitting here. The direct process would be called LA redeal, where a gas particle directly collides with an already bound particle out of the gas phase. Now when we look at the time scales, we can compute the collision rate um, with grain particles that depend on the cross section of the grain size, the velocity of the hydrogen atoms and the densities. Putting in typical numbers, we find that the collision rate needs to be in the order of 3 times 10 to the minus 17. So this is at typical densities and velocities, the collision rates as a function of the densities. Now when we compare this with the H2 formation rate, which is of course the collision times the probability that the collision leads to the formation of a molecule, so it needs to stick to the surface, it needs to run around and recombine on the surface with another particle and it needs to desorb then as molecule back into the gas phase. From the comparison of this and this numbers we see that the three products the, uh, of the probabilities must be nearly unity because um, from extinction observations we find that this is the number of collisions that we actually observe. So we have a very efficient process here. And to look a little bit into detail, the time scales involved for sticking to the grain, wandering around and so on can be computed from these classical expressions where we have ED here, the desorption energy, so the strength of the binding between the particle and the surface as a function of the surface temperature, which depends on the, um, on the um, characteristic frequency between the bound particle and the surface. So there is a vibrational um, binding here, which is in the order of 10 to the 12 per second. So this is the time scale on which um, we ho might hop around because the particle is um, like vibrating back and forth on the surface. Physical uh, the binding to the surface can be either just physically by, um, for example, weak binding van der Waals attraction. This corresponds to binding energies in the order of 400 Kelvin putting this into the uh, formula for the adsorption time gives us something like 10 to the 5 seconds at 10 Kelvin and 2 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds at 40 Kelvin. So a uh, extreme steep dependence on the temperature, So, which means that a hydrogen atom will immediately evaporate from the grain if the grain is 20 Kelvin and warmer and it will not be able to meet another hydrogen atom. However, if we bind the hydrogen atom chemically with covalent bindings to the surface, we are 
now at binding energies of tens or ten thousands of Kelvin, which brings our Ta to infinite times at very warm and hot grain surface temperatures. So suddenly it can sit around long enough for a direct hit from another particle from the gas phase. Now the second H atom arrives at the collision time scale, which is a function just of the collision rate and the density. So we have the time scale a few hundred seconds for typical densities. So that means when we have a Ta of very long, then the collision time scale will be many times shorter. So we will have many collisions per hydrogen atom sitting on the grain during its residence time, even if we only have physical absorption. So by just comparing the time scales, we can argue that the probability for a collision is basically unity, or a uh, probability for the encounter between hydrogen atoms. Now the migration around the surface, the surface hopping, is only possible if it's not strongly bound. So we are in physisorption conditions. The time scale, the hopping time scale is one, um, one um, hop from one to the other binding site in 10 to the minus 9 seconds, which means when we have a grain, that is typically sized for an interstellar um, dust grain, it, uh, one hydrogen atom can wander around the entire grain in just very fast times. So in 10 to the minus 3 seconds, we scan the whole surface of a grain because all the binding sites are just 1.5 angstrom apart, so they are close to each other and the grains are not too large, which means even if an, an hydrogen evaporates in within 10 or 100 or second, then there is sufficient time for a wandering hydrogen atom to actually come to the binding site and form and, and, and do a collision between the two. So we saw from the time scale estimates that the probability for hydrogen atoms to meet on a grain surface are basically unity. The probability for desorption is also very high because we have a lot of binding energy being released and some of it will be available to overcome the binding to the surface. And um, so provided that the dust temperature is not too high or strong, it is very plausible that this product is in the order of unity. So H2 formation as the most important chemical reaction in the universe is still not fully understood. So there are many experiments and theoretical examinations taking place that provide constraints on mobility of the absorbed, adsorbed hydrogen atoms, on the binding energies, on how these atoms behave on different ground materials, silicates, on ices, carbonaceous materials, and so on. And due to our lack of understanding of the grain specifics, of course, chemical reactions on the grain are only loosely constrained. It might also be the case when we have very irregular and porous grain particles, let's assume this is the surface and we have here two hydrogen atoms forming a molecule being released and then being re-colliding here with the particle and unable to escape the grain, that we have a reduced formation efficiency just due to the shape of the um, grain particles. And many other complications come to mind um, in these, um, in these um, model views here.
So in other chemical species, typically only diffusive mechanisms, mechanisms are considered. So the typical day in the life on the surface of a grain is that we have a few molecules or atoms landing on the surface. Everything other than hydrogen and helium actually sticks. If the species are sufficiently light, they can hop around or tunnel from one binding site to the other. And if they encounter another species, we might have reactions if activation barriers are sufficiently low. So delimiting activation barriers at reaction of reactions at around 10 Kelvin dust temperature are at a few one hundred or a few thousand Kelvin for the different species. So summarizing, we, we find a large variety of molecules that are observed in the ISM. And the basic processes of their formation and destruction have been identified and networks, chemical networks have been developed to actually explain the abundances qualitatively and quantitatively. However, there are many in uncertainties involved because our knowledge on all the important inputs are, is still incomplete. So we need many more experiments and many more modeling to actually get to a good understanding even though we made tremendous um, tremendous steps forward over the last 30 years. So it's very important to combine astrophysical modeling, astronomical observations and lab astrophysic experiments to actually reach a full picture. So this is the end of our lecture on the physics and chemistry of the interstellar medium. Thanks to everybody who kept listening. If you are interested in the topic, you are welcome to contact me. If you are interested in doing some research and doing some study work on these topics, then you are also welcome to contact me. And I would be glad to meet you again in the next semester where we talk about data analysis in general and also in particular in astrophysical applications. Thank you for listening and See you next time. Bye-bye.